As a social ecologist, I study the interaction of the human and the natural worlds, and I work at the interface between those worlds to understand what environmental problems we're causing and how we can best solve them. I do all of my work because I tell my students I have a fire under my feet, and that fire are large global environmental challenges that inspire me to action. In order to convey that to my students, I start with four images. Every course, four images. One, the steady rise in carbon dioxide accumulation in the atmosphere over the last 150 years. Two, dead zones in the ocean where because of the influx of nitrogen, there are areas where there is no longer sea life. Three is the amount of land across the earth that's already used for agriculture or grazing, which is most of the fertile land in the world. And the last is the total biomass of all land vertebrate species. That's to show my students that wild animals have almost no representation today on earth relative to the amount of representation that humans and their domestic animals have. I decided to do my PhD with Professor Ornstein because his work is really interesting. I was interested in specifically in working on ecosystem services, which is what he's been doing. So for my PhD research project, I conducted an evaluation of socio-ecological research at a few different platforms in Europe. So I interviewed about 20 stakeholders, researchers, land managers, business interests, other people, and asked them what kind of research would have the most impact here? Is research having an impact? How does research translate into actually something happening in the real world? Is it just that scientists are writing papers? Is that information getting used in some way? That's what we wanted to know. So we did about 66 interviews and I synthesized them and then provide recommendations that can be used by the entire European network. The Tavor Winery is interested in implementing more sustainable policies in their vineyards. In particular, they want to reduce the amount of herbicides used in the field. When we came to work with the Tavor Wineries, the first thing we did was interview everyone. Everyone engaged in this process to try to understand what everyone's interests were, what everyone's fears were, and what everyone thought the best outcome would be from this work. Professor Ornstein came with the idea how to research the socio-ecological aspects and I said, wow, we need to check this and it was a great cooperation. The first challenge was to bring the ecological balance from the nature that surround my vineyards back to the vineyards. We built a lot of nesting box for the barn owl to nest and to make his cycle of life in the vineyards. We found out that the cover crop gave us a lot of advantage. We don't have any erosion, soil erosion anymore. We decrease direct radiation from the sun, so we affect the microclimate of the cluster. A lot of parasitoids came from the cover crop and they eating all the cicades and mealybug that eating the grapes. We have now a natural enemies because of this cover crop, so we don't need to spray anymore at the vineyards. And we control now the way we want to grow the vines and not the vines control us. And I think we were successful in helping the winery move their farmers towards a more sustainable outcome. And in that way, I think the environment benefits, the farmers benefit, the wineries benefit, and of course the public benefits. Technion is special in what it might offer for solutions to environmental challenges because we have experts here who are problem solvers. They are engineers, they are doctors, they are creators. I sincerely believe that humans are facing an existential crisis, but I also very much believe that we, humanity, can come together and recognize and resolve those problems. And that's what makes my job so rewarding.